Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to your favorite night of the week, Tuesday night, because that means the number one show in all of Alabama content, period. The Bama Standard is on the air. Before we get started, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, live chat, do your thing. If you're watching the replay, get down there, leave us some great comments, show us some love. As always, we're brought to you by Workspace Solutions. If your business needs a digital presence or a full-fledged marketing team, these are the guys that you need coaching your business up. Folks, I am your host, the legendary Tribal Chief, Justin Riley. With me, as always, is a living legend, the undefeated, undisputed king of comedy. Get your ones to the sky because his awesomeness, you can't deny, it, ladies and gentlemen, the star, Steve Brown. Hi, people. I'm here. I'm back. And I realize that you guys can't do it without me, so that's why I'm here. Uh, I'm so delighted to be back to help this show and that the numbers are going to go up tremendously. And I'm just excited to be back, you know, to help this show, you know, just your charitable I'll giver, be. charitable giver. I love it. So, I'm just happy. Charitable, my butt. Man. And the disgruntled person right next to him is a 1999 all SEC linebacker. When Ric Flair said to be the man, woo, you got to beat the man. He is that man, Marvin Constant. Oh. Hey, I'm currently locked out of the chat, man. That's what I'm trying to get in the chat. I can't even communicate with the people tonight. Well, there's a restraint. Yeah, well, there, I sir. just want people. Well, uh, Justin, I want I want people to know this. I don't know if you know, and I may as well let the, let the cat out the bag. I decided to, you know, do a little something for my guy Marvin Constant. He's wearing a black leotard, so am I. So I decided I was going to do that tonight. I got on the black leotard, you know, uh, for for my boy Marv. You know, you can't ask for a better show of brotherhood than right there, Steve. We appreciate your efforts as always, above and beyond. Well, I appreciate it, but I was not wearing that same thong that you're currently wearing. wasn't doing that. Well, sir, this your your OnlyFans is on Thursday night, so I can understand the confusion. Anyway, he's a senior analyst of Touchdown Alabama Magazine and the international sex symbol, Stephen M. Smith. Yay! <laughs> You're on mute, sir. You're too With excited. With extra fog in the glass. Got extra gotcha. Fog he can see all the way to 2030. <laughs> 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 and we got a two-time national champion, a two-time USFL champion, one of the baddest dudes to ever tote that rock. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bo Scarborough. What's up, guy? What's up? I'm just, I'm just, wait, I'm just waiting on, I'm just waiting on my jersey or some type of gift, or uh, uh, some type of, some type of cleat jersey pants to go into the Paul Bryant Museum. Hint, hint. <laughs> well, we actually have somebody here that can help with that. Stephen and Smith, let's not keep our audience waiting anymore. We got our top fan and actually the queen of the Bama standard. Go ahead and introduce the folks to our guest tonight. Well, we got the unbelievably talented, unbelievably sweet and accommodating the star of the Paul Bright Museum. The one who let Steve Brown come in and take everything, but Steve eventually gives it back. Hopefully, eventually. We got Miss Olivia Arnold here. Yay! That's my cousin. That's my first Do cousin. Do is send me something. I will put it in the museum, but you haven't sent me anything yet. Oh, that sounds oh. like a... You ain't like did. Hope. I didn't know I had to send you some. That's I'm supposed to get it, send Steve Brown to your house to take it for me? Steve Brown. <laughs> He was told everything. I, you know, I had tell everything Steve, there, and then Steve took tell, it. Tell Steve to go in here, man, K. He got LSU, Alabama. All, he didn't stole everything. <laughs> look, at him, look at him. Look at him. He don't even want to return it. He got a secret door in his house. It looked like a wall. You press the button, you, you see all the college stuff in there. And he don't know. <laughs> He don't know nobody but 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 Alabama players. Steve Brown has a panic room in his house where he hides for him from himself. <laughs> well, I will send you some, Miss Olivia. Okay, Miss Olivia, are you gonna let these guys talk about the star of the show <laughs> like this? Are you? Are you really gonna do this? No, I, well, I'm gonna join them. <laughs> oh, wow! Oh, wow! We, we gotta you know, upgrade you know this week. Vengeance for Brown. Vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy well, to be here, y'all. 
we are happy to have you or more happy that Olivia is with us and she's got a very huge oh she kicked Marvin out man the power you have Olivia that, Marvin, I'm, I'm nervous Marvin now would not be the one okay. <laughs> Steve did you push your eject button again yes <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, we're going to give Miss Olivia her time. But first, we got a lot going on right now in Bama Nation. And this next segment is brought to you by none other than Title Towel Lesson here. The folk, folks, listen, the, the season never ends. And in order to celebrate Alabama the best way, go to WhitwellSports.com today and get your very own Title Towel. Enter the promo code STANDARD to get a nice discount from your favorite show right now here and listen eight days i'm still waiting week. on my towel anyway is the promo is ruined folks go ahead and go whitwillsports.com <laughs> and pick up your title towel enter in standard and get you a nice little promo rate and the rate's so good you can get marvin one so he can stop crying Right. <laughs> hey, hey, my, my, Mike Coleman, you're right. I logged out and I logged back in to put Olivia between me and Steve. I don't like being next to nonsense. Mm. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, somebody who is not bringing it up. I'm trying to transition, but I keep getting interruptions from this dude here wearing the leotard and then the guy who's being shamed. <laughs> okay, so let me say this real quick. And I think I think this point really needs to be relayed. Even though football season isn't happening right now, the Bama standard is still here. So make mm. sure you tune in because we got all of the news about Bama you want to hear, plus some. So – I just feel like I just need to throw that in there as well. Now, we're, we're still gonna always be here, you know. Not Marvin. Not Marvin. All right, that was powerful. Kind of like got the Morgan Freeman vibes when you did that. Very nice, Steve. But listen, a man that needs no introduction is Stephen M. Smith, and he has all the latest news from spring practice, including scrimmage. We got some things going on you need to know about, and we're gonna talk about it right now in the death chart. So before we get into the depth chart of this show right here, let's first give a round of applause for Bama men's basketball in that final four. How about that? You know, those guys in the final four, Coach Nate Oates and the team are flying out to Phoenix. Uh, the trail right sale will play in this matchup. You know, he had a little bit of an injury, uh, but he'll play in this matchup. A young man that after Mark Sears, probably the most efficient shooter on the floor, that being one of the trail right sale. So, to have him back, hopefully we have Grant he Grant Nelson on. Uh, of course, you got Ryan Griffin shooting well. All the guys are shooting well right now. Mm -hmm. So he gets the Final Four. This is huge. Excited for those young men as Marvin imitating his best three point shot at the bottom of me. <laughs> but we look now to Bama football, and so the big news right now at on the offensive line at center. A shakeup has happened. I know Bama brought in a transfer, Parker Brousford from Washington, but James Brockermeyer, the former four star who came in the 2021 class, has beat him out. Mm -hmm. Brockermeyer has beat him out. There was competition at center. Brockermeyer has showed, hey, it took me some time to develop. It took me some time to work on my craft, but I have it now. Very smart, highly intelligent guy. When I talk to coaches, when I talk to coaches, James Brockermeyer snaps the ball perfect every time. No bad snaps when you look at James Brockermeyer, which is huge. I mean, here's a guy that he and his brother Tommy, they both came to Bama in the same class. Tommy was the five-star, but Tommy transferred back home to Texas. He transferred back to TCU. Uh, James stuck around and at that offensive line spot where it takes time to develop. He has developed. He's grown up. So James Brockermeyer has beat out Parker Brousford. He is the starting center mm -hmm. right now. And along with that, uh, Jalen Milrow had a huge first scrimmage. Several touchdowns. Throwing, running. Uh, Kang and DeBoer said the guy is tough to handle. When you think you got him, you really don't got him. But here's the thing, Steve Brown. Kang and DeBoer said the growth he has made in the intermediate passing game. Mm -hmm. He's got it. The growth he has made passing the football, the play calling of Nick Sheridan, it suited to Milrow. They're letting him be him. 
they're letting Milro be Milro, and th- th- this this is fun uh, seeing this right now. So uh, Jalen Milro's growing. Uh, you got the center and James Brockermeyer, and then uh, another big thing at linebacker. Here's Marvin's position now. Marvin, I asked Coach KD about one specific linebacker, Jeremiah Alexander from Thompson High School in Alabaster. He said, when that dude is on the field, stuff happens. And when he said stuff happens, it took me back to Marvin like that, when stuff happens. Because when Marvin was out there, stuff happened. So here is Jeremiah Alexander. When you, I brought up his name, he said, that guy, stuff happens, and I'm just happy he's on my side. Well, stuff happens. Stuff happens, uh, meaning he's creating plays and he's, He's making things, he's making stops, and he's all over the field. That's cool. That's not that's not what happened with Marvin. Stuff happens like penalties, missed tackles, offside, talking to himself, not paying attention. That's the stuff happens when we mean when we use Marvin. But when this guy is is productive. So you right. Happy. You're right. That's that's why I have that all SEC plaque sitting over there. You're right. Yeah, right. Just want to clarify that. That plaque is actually a church league basketball MVP. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, been sparing you. They got a meal. I've been sparing you, Justin. <laughs> sparing me. You keep on. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I also drag you into his nonsense. I also, but, want to, I also want to address Tim Glover's thing about the field goal kicker. I know people have been wondering, Will Riker, after all the success he's had the last five years, who takes on that mantle? That mantle. It'll be Connor Talty. Talty okay. had a good scrimmage. Made quite a few kicks. Uh, he's he's firm. He's firm out there. Will Riker kind of t- took uh, Talty under his wing last year, coached him up on some things, taught him some things. Now, Talty came in with a strong leg by himself, but Riker kind of fed him the mental part of the game and staying locked in as a kicker. So Connor mm-hmm. Talty would be the one kicking field goals. Now, in terms of the return game aspect for Alabama, kickoff or return and punt return, here's where it could get fun. Kick return – I could see Jeremy Bernard of a transfer from Washington, but punt return, the five-star Jalen Mbakwe, he mm-hmm. could get a look right there. And that's the kid from Clay Chalkville High School that played quarterback, that played receiver, that played defensive back, but he also returned punts in high school. And he was very dynamic when he touched the football. So Mbakwe could be the punt returner. Mm, interesting. Mm. Uh, I love hearing that. So let's talk about those guys that you just mentioned, the emergence of James Brockemeyer. We've been waiting for oh so long for him to finally take that step. And then we mentioned Jeremiah Alexander, a guy that I had my eye on coming out of Thompson High School. And now Kobe Prentice is just showing off human highlight reel. We all saw the film earlier today. Steven, and I'll I'll ask Jaden when he comes on later, what about this new era is making it their time? I feel like I feel, I feel like all of these guys are hungry. I feel like all of these guys, not just hungry, but as much as we enjoyed the 17 years with Nick Saban and we all did, uh, I feel like with this new era, Coach DeBoer and his staff, uh, they're not tied to anybody. They they want they want you to show if you're the real guy, show us you're the real deal. Like make us play you for real. If mm. you listen to the coach, it's about we want competition everywhere. We're handling this by competition. Every coach talks about that competition. If you are the cream of the crop, you rise. Go out there and destroy practice. Go out there and make plays. Go out there and show us why you deserve to be a starter in this rotation or at the very least a marquee contributing piece in the rotation. So we enjoy Nick Saban, absolutely. But the fact that there is real competition at every spot and these guys are hungry at every spot, and they have something to prove. This is an Alabama program with, with something to prove again because no one's talking about them. You know, nobody's putting them in any, any type of playoff conversation. Here is a Bama that a lot of people are saying, well, Saban's retired. Well, Bama's done. Saban's out of here. There's no Bama. So yeah. now here are these guys hungry with something to prove here. Well, you know what? I said this before, and I, Marvin gave he gave a good point as far as the development of the players or whatever. But for some reason, I just believe that Bama, uh, under the first under co- coach uh, DeBoer, will make a lot of noise. I really believe that. And, I, and I, now Marvin makes a lot of sense because, of course, he's been there. Bo, y'all been there, done that. But as far as the, the, the development, 
and them getting a go that chemistry. You know what I'm saying, Marvin? Like the chemistry or whatever. But I don't know. I just feel like something's in the air. It's a little bit more excitement. So we might make some. We might surprise a lot of people. Now, I want another question. I have, one question I have though is, what about the other quarterbacks? And I hope that they're developing as well. Oh, I, they I, are. I heard Todd Simpson is doing well as well. As as of right as of right now, the number the number two spot behind Milrow is kind of kind of neck and neck between Simpson and Larnigan. Simpson mm. and Larnigan are kind of neck and neck with it. Simpson's holding it right now, but Larnigan, that kid's just a pure quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's just a pure quarterback. <laughs> so you got Larnigan and Simpson kind of neck and neck, and then you got Austin Mack, who's very interesting. He's a little raw. He's only 17, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. He's a little raw, but when you talk about the ability to make off-script throws, you go back and you watch – some of the recap from the first scrimmage on Bama's Twitter page, Austin Mack had a couple of off script throws and had you go, okay, mm -hmm. once he fully gets it, he can be something too, but mm -hmm. he's a little bit raw right now. So right now the number two guy, it's, it's between Simpson and Larnigan. They're, they're mm -hmm. both neck and neck here. It's by the yeah. smallest of hairs. That, that's a great thing. That's great. That's great. Yeah. It's iron sharpening iron. So that's really good. Now, with all the energy coming out of practice, we've all heard about the famous playlist and the music generating. Olivia, I have to ask, do you have anything to do with the, the music selection with, in practice here as of late? Because I've, I've been hearing some, some TI going on out there. I know that came from your catalog. Can you uh, touch okay. on that? No, but I tell you what, if um, the music were coming for me, uh, it probably wouldn't hype them up very much. <laughs> baby shark, do 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 baby shark. Yeah, that's probably what, no. yeah. All right, I'm sorry, Olivia. I'm done. Nah, 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 nah. Hold on. Now, now, Marvin, if you put that to a trap mix, I didn't get some folks <laughs> hype out there. <laughs> every time I get it, Marvin must have talked to my husband. They must have talked about this when we saw each other a while back because every time we get some new electronic device, the first song that my husband plays on it is Baby Shark. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I, I I wish they would play some like some sh you know sh Shania Twain you know still the one. I, I'm not. Or, or you feel like a woman or something? No, I just like this. <laughs> I just like Shania Twain. These are my confessions. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What version was that? That I don't think we're gonna see that on the CNN. That's, yeah. that, that's the extended cut, actually. Go ahead, Justin. Go ahead. I'm but see, can you I'm imagine seeing him on the CMAs? <laughs> the world, man. Things you yeah, come to yeah, see, yeah. folks. That's why you're here every week. But we're gonna shine the spotlight on Olivia before we kind of get to what you have going on, and ultimately surprise you had to reveal what have you noticed and as far as the change of the atmosphere you're kind of in the middle of it you're probably leading the charge what what have you seen since coach DeVore has arrived up until now one thing that i've seen is um a lot of the former players that kind of didn't feel like they had a, a voice in the program or didn't really feel like they should be coming back. I think that has changed quite a bit. Um, Marvin, you may have been on it. I know uh, Coach did a Zoom call with a bunch of the, the former football players and they got to submit questions beforehand and you know, and he's been making it a point to to make the the players that helped to build the the foundation and that are part of the legacy. He's been making it a point to make sure that they they feel welcome. Um, being over in the facility, some uh, it just seems a, a little bit lighter, a little bit more uh, laid back. Um, the players that I've talked to all have had fantastic things to say about DeBoer. But they didn't read my question. I mean, all I asked for was to have a night out with Coach and the boys. You know, at one point during the season, the boy can't hang out with us guys night out. <laughs> I'll, I'll get right on that. I'll go over there tomorrow and talk to him about it. <laughs> Tell him we just he, want to show him some love the right way, to, the Alabama way. He didn't I feel mean, comfortable about going out with a guy who had a shirt on with the back out. Hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Last time the co the co uh, Alabama coach hung out with the guys, Marvin, you guys, I think he got in trouble. He didn't get a chance to coach his I first game. I was not game. with Mike Price. You was with Mike Price. <laughs> yeah, you were. You were at the strip club with Mike Price because I was too. 
Because I, I <laughs> and Steve because turned I them in. Better, I was one credit card. I was one that told. I ain't get paid. <laughs> now, now, I, I, now, going back to, I guess the just environment that Coach DeBoer has created. The play, not only the former players have been enjoying this, the current players have too. And DeBoer has brought a lot of these former guys to be on the coaching staff. You look at Jamie Mosley right now. Mm -hmm. You know, Jamo played for Coach Saban, was a national champion linebacker. And so now Jamie Mosley is assisting uh, Freddie Roach with the defensive line. Mm -hmm. And Jamo is out there with a black straw hat on, and he is literally coaching into these defensive linemen. And -hmm. these guys have really taken Jamo's teaching extremely well. Uh, when I was out there, I got, I got people tell me this defensive line, you know, there's there's not just one person coming after the quarterback. It's everybody. Like, this mm. entire defensive line is swarming at everybody. So th- this is going to be very fun to see, you know, with this defensive line playing this way. The linebacking core of Deontay Lawson, of Jihad Campbell, Sterling Dixon, who's had a great spring, Jeremiah Alexander, who's had a great spring. Like, we're going to now see – how good these linebackers are in this Kane Womack system with this defensive line swarming everywhere. Mm. No doubt. Mm. Well, Libby, it is your time. You are the director. It is, it of is my, the, my right turn. Well, first, I feel a little bit left out because I haven't gone to a practice or a scrimmage yet, but uh, I'm going to, I'm going to fix that this week. I'm going to go see what everybody's talking about. Um, so before I get to the announcement, I did want to talk about, um, a day and we have a huge lineup of folks coming and signing for us. Um, we wanted to kind of commemorate, uh, all of the teams that played under coach Saban. So we've got a fantastic lineup. I'm just, it, and it may change a little bit. We may add a person here or there. But this is going to be Saturday at the Bryant Museum from 10 to 11, Saturday at 8 a.m. Um, we're going to have Will Riker there signing, uh, Landon Dickerson, Marquise Mays, Christian mm. Jones, Trent Richardson, mm. Blake Sims, Andre Smith, T. Cody, and Tyrion Arnold are all going to be there signing autographs. Mm, that's going to be great. Okay, okay. What about and, Steve Brown? Uh, Steve, well, Steve Brown's going to be there on Friday night from six to eight when y'all do your podcast. <laughs> so you can come and see Steve Brown. And then after you see Steve Brown, y'all can stay. And from eight to 10, we're having a thing called a uh, late night with Landon. And Landon's going to be doing some meet and greet with some, with some guests and some visitors and everything that night. So can you okay. set up, a, can you set up a, a late night with Steve after Landon? I, listen, it's going to be 10 o'clock at night by the time we're done with the landing event. And I'm tired and I'm old and I got to go home and get some sleep because I got to be back at work at 7 o'clock the next morning. I mean, we could do it on the outside of the building, you know. Yeah. You can. You can. Absolutely. Yes, you can. So meet me after landing thing at the meet for landing. And meet me in the parking lot. And I'm going I'm to sign some stuff. <laughs> You're some telling people happens. to a fight for a minute and meet you in the parking lot. <laughs> He has done that, but he's calmed down a lot since he got saved. But what she's talking about, folks, I need to remind everybody, April 12th at the Paul W. Bryant Museum, your favorite show, the Bama Standard, is going to be live, 6 p.m., doing our thing, like Olivia said, 6 to 8, getting you ready for the eight-day game. And she alluded to it a little bit earlier. We're going to have a table full of guests. LaRon McClain's going to be there. Blake Sims is going to be there working on a few others. But we've made you wait long enough. We have an extra special guest that's going to be a part of the panel. And, Olivia, if you would, do the honors and tell people who is going to be with us on our show. Uh, Steve, I'm sorry. Next week, you are not going to be the star of the show because joining the Bama Standard Podcast next week is going to be none other than the man with the brand new lawnmower, Landon Dickerson. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> OG. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are y'all clapping for? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, can he be like a co star? Can he be? Can he, that Justin? You're not going to say nothing? Can he be like a co star? Well, the thing me? is, Olivia has more pull. 
Marvin, you not gonna say nothing? Nope, not a word. <laughs> I'm out of it. Uh, 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 Stephen, you not Stephen, you not gonna say it. Stephen, but and Bo just left. left. And Bo I'm just left. He want to deal with the drama. <laughs> <laughs> Bo just dipped. Bo just straight dipped. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miss 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 o Olivia, can I can I make one request for Friday night? Yes, sir. Can we have full moon for? You want full moon? You want full moon for dinner? I can probably get you some full no, moon. You just, okay. gotta, you just gotta y'all y'all gotta text me what y'all want, and I'll order y'all some dinner. Woodrow, you know what? You know what? No, 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 Marvin already requested full moon, so you no. don't. No, wait a minute. Well, if they wanted Woodrow's, I'm good with that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with the Woodrow's now. Well, Woodrow's doesn't have the half moon cookies. I don't okay. eat the cookie. No, I know no, you don't eat the cookies. I know. <laughs> Just right. drink the water. That's it. You know what? Water and protein. That's yeah, all I need. That's, that's what it. I really have on. Listen. So, so Marvin, you want to? Y'all want full moon, huh? And I'm not gonna be the star of the show. Y'all really want the full moon? moon? All right. <laughs> don't, stand out, don't stand all the way up. They don't want to see what you got on. Them chaps with no see, underwear. All right, let's go. I have something to make you feel a little bit special, though. Did y'all know that there has been a book written about Steve Brown? No way. What? Doctor Seuss, the cat now. It's cooking. called. It's called the Missing Ring. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> He took, it. he took it. He took it. He took it. He took it. <laughs> he took it. He got one. I mean, it's, 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 my, it's my trash can, and now it's the ring. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. I thought he was going to be like Bilbo and disappear when he put the ring on. You know, it's a movie, and Steve. No. Okay? That doesn't happen in real life. If he starts talking about precious, then we're <laughs> my precious. <laughs> uh, well, listen, folks, <laughs> we're having a lot of fun. We're about to add some more excitement to the lineup. And Miss Olivia, please stay with us. And I'm sure you got some great questions for our next guest, Stephen and Smith. Only you can bring him on. Listen, you're the best MC in the entire world, and you're a star like Steve Brown. So we need you to do your thing and bring on our guest well we got here one of the monster makers on the offensive line one of the king one of the king kong godzilla the guy that's gonna take you out to the ground the guy that's learning from coach chris camp right now the guy that played on nick saban's final sec championship team last year but my boy looking for that natty he's looking for that national championship we got the pride of houston texas north shore high school entering boom 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 <laughs> jade roberts yeah. <laughs> right, wait before anybody say anything what's up first cousin what's going on man how you doing? hey man how, how mama and them doing man they ain't talk man hey. Hey, they're doing good, man. We've been missing you. Hey, been man. Hey, man. I, man, we, we got to call, call me yep. after hey. this. <laughs> <I got you. laughs> That's my first cousin. That's my first cousin. How everybody doing? Everybody man, doing. I'm everybody good, doing. brother. Glad to have you back on. So I got to ask the, you. I got asked the immediate question, Jaden, for the past few weeks. We've mm -hmm. gotten the fans involved so as far as helping you choose a new nickname for your merch. Yes, sir. Let's not keep them waiting any longer. Do you have a name picked out? And if it if you do, go ahead and let them know. You know what? Like you said, everybody's been waiting patiently. And I really do appreciate everybody. I just want to give a shout out real quick to uh, Cece and uh, her team. You know, just come up with a website for us to uh, get this going. Um, shout out to my team, you know, Mark and everybody behind him. Um, just making this whole thing possible, you know. It's uh it's been it's been a long wait and um I know the fans eagerly been waiting. Um I seen everybody suggested picks for the name. Um I appreciate everybody and I hope there's no hard feelings when it comes to the name because at the end of the day I'm just trying to pick what's best and I at the end of the day I thank everybody for their uh help. But with the pick, I'm gonna say the Crimson Colossus. 
Ooh, what... I like that. Yeah. 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 My yeah. idea, folks. My idea. Wait a minute. What? Uh, I, I should have known you're behind it, Olivia. I, I should have known <laughs> that. <laughs> wow. Hey, man, I like that, man. That hey, is you know, powerful. Mama's going to be proud of you, man. Yes, sir. But not only with that, we're also going to have three more names. And I'll release, I'll release the names once we, you know, finally get the merch going and everything. But uh, there's going to be three more names. I'm pretty sure everybody's going to like that, too. So just stay tuned. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. I just want to say that when all the merch comes out, that uh, you need to just walk across the street to the Bryant Museum and talk to me so we can get some of that stuff and help you out with that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hey, cuz, don't forget that the shirt that's coming out with me and you on now. You know what oh, I'm saying? Back to back. Yes, sir. <laughs> Has your creative team come out with a nickname for Steve Brown yet? Or is that the still kind of in the works? <laughs> we are family. That's not we are family. The, the, the coffee stain. <laughs> we gonna, gonna, make it, gonna make it happen. Don't worry. <laughs> Well, man, let's get to it. I, I'm sure everybody on the panel has got some questions. I mean, we appreciate you jumping on right after practice. I know you're excited about A-Day. Last oh, yeah. time we talked, there was a little of unfamiliarity between you and the new coaching staff. So you've had an opportunity to learn them, to, to grow with them, learn their personalities. So if you would, man, tell us now, after spending this time, what excites you about this new staff? And a part two to that, why are they the right guys for you? Man, um, with this new coaching staff, and let me just say, they have done an incredible job with, you know, the guys returning and newer guys, the freshmen, you know, the guys that need, that need everybody needs development, but the guys that need that extra step in the development. Um, them coming from Washington or, you know, coaches coming from everywhere, um, they understand what it takes to, you know, really build a, a relationship with, players and that's what I really like about this new coaching staff you know they're building relationships with us not just in football but outside of football you know they're trying to understand us as a person you know what kind of men we are um at the University of Alabama and with the new coaching staff you know just not in development but they're really trying to understand like what um what makes us tick so you know um you know just understand our behaviors and just different stuff like that, our character, you know, just trying to make us better men at the end of the day. But, um, you know, they bring a lot to the table. Um, they expect a lot from us. You know, the standard is still the standard. Um, the new coaches understand a lot of what takes to be the University of Alabama, and that's what we're working towards, you know, just keeping the standard. But, you know, um, they want us all to uh, grow and succeed. Yes, sir. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, Order, we're going to give it to Steve and M. Smith and go, go down to Steve Brown, drop down to Olivia, then to Marvin, then to Bo. What you got, Steve and M.? I mean, Jay, when you look at Coach, you know, Chris Cap, you know, obviously he had success there at Michigan State, North Carolina, Colorado, but what has he brought to this offensive line room and how, how has he been able to mesh with everybody? <coughs> just everybody. Talk about oh. Steve, your glasses interfering with the signal. You cutting out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, that last part, my bad. I told him his glasses interfering with the signal. He, he come on, man, fix that. Um, but no, um, Coach Cab, you know, he he's doing a lot for us. You know, um, just like I said, with the new coaching staff, you know, Coach Coach Cab, you know, he came into uh, a room full of guys that you know he he knew he was gonna have to build a new relationship with. Um. You know, but you also have some re returning guys, and you know, um, it's crazy how you say the uh, you know the world the world is a small place because um, most of us already knew kind of uh, Coach Cap from recruiting, so um, that that kind of played a, a, a huge part into um, you know him knowing us, you know, just kind of relationship wise, and um, with the new guys, um, you know, he's uh, he's just really helping us develop into uh, the players that we know we could be. And um, just just growing in a huge way of our character and how we grow as men, because that's what he truly cares about is us um, just getting better as men. You know what I mean? That's what's up. Steve Brown, oh. it's your turn, sir. So uh, I understand that the offense is doing really well. But mm -hmm. as you look on the other side of the ball, 
do you feel that the defense is going to really cause a lot of problems for the Colts this year? Man, you uh, yeah, now they, you, you say that um, with the defense, you know, uh, new coaching staff and everything, you know, um, I, I see the defense now this year as just more hungry, man, because, you know, everybody's itching to uh, get on the field. You know, a lot of young guys doing a lot of good things, and you know, a lot, a lot of vets. You know, just teaching them how to, uh, how to play the defense. You know, how to be hungry, how to be ball dominant, and um, it's really huge how you, um, how we're going to see the defense play. Um, you know, just this year, and y'all gonna see it firsthand on a day. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yes, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. It'll I'm be a good. Nice, nice, nice. Olivia, what you got for him? I know you got some awesome questions. Well, so I had some really important questions, like you know, you know, who, which quarterback has won the locker room and everything like that. But Steve won't quit texting me, and he, I'm just going to ask his question. He wants to know, Jaden, what is your favorite Shania Twain song? <laughs> 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 I, I have a favorite song from her. You want to have a favorite? Song? All right, I, I'll, I'll uh, listen. I'll, I'll, I'll come over there one day this week, and I'll leave a CD with Jennifer for you. So you just go down there and you pick up a Shania Twain CD from Jennifer, and then, then come back and let us know your favorite. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Cause, cause I'm playing it at cause we family. Remember that. Remember that. <laughs> gotcha. Marvin. All right. So we all know in spring and early in the season, but mostly in spring, there's always one side of the ball that tends to dominate. And the history of Alabama football, we all know that's defense. You know, the Bama standard uh, owns you know pretty much the field. Uh, so has the standard been? upheld this year is the defense truly dominating the offense the way I, I i truly believe it has been has that defense started to separate itself showing those signs that it is the defense of old has they made it damn near impossible for y'all to get plays off and how many times has coach had the year repeated because that defense was out there doing what defense does it is just like you said man um you know i think like you said, in general, like the whole team has been upholding the standard. Everybody is understand what it takes to truly try and play on the University of Alabama football. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not, not for everybody. It's not for the weak. You know what I mean? Like everybody's hungry to either have a spot or be the next man up. You know, ready to do their job for the the boys, the people that got, they go to war with. You know what I mean? And okay. yes, sir. Okay. You say everybody's hungry to have a spot. You know what it takes to get the winning, though? For everybody right. to be hungry enough to go take a damn spot. There you go. There you go. And that's real. And I, yeah. I, I, Want it and taking it are two different things. Right. No, you're right. No, you're right. Everybody, everybody is ready to take a spot. You know what I mean? But, like, just with the defense in general, um, yeah, everybody, everybody hungry. Like, you know what I mean? They – we go to war every day. That's what we do. We go to war every day when we go to practice, you know, offense on versus defense. You know what I mean? Whoever wins, wins. But, like, at the end of the day, um, er everybody everybody getting better. You know what I mean? Everybody upholding the standard. Everybody is trying to be a leader in their own way. Everybody is trying to be ruthless killers. Dave, you know what I really want to see? I want to see this team get back to the Alabama defense of old to where when you out there before kickoff, when we on our side and the other team on their yeah. side, they can't even run their plays because they're too busy looking at our side because they're scared of what's about to happen to them. Then you go out there for that coin toss and you see that fear in their yeah. eyes because they know this is Alabama football. They know yeah. when they walk across them lines what's yeah. coming. That's hey. what I want to see this team get back to. Like, I, 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 like, I like that. And I, ambition to where you take their soul from them before they even get off the bus. Hey, yeah. hey, hey Mom, I like that, Mom, but I, I don't like the way you're talking to my little big cousin like that. I love my football, and I love yeah, yeah. my football. Yeah, but so don't, don't talk to my little big cousin like that. Jaden, how you going to hold them up to that standard? Because, you know, the standard at, at, um, at Alabama is very high. It's no. high. It, it's some big shoes to fill, not size 18, no size 32. Right. 
<laughs> there have been some great athletes that came through that that is legendary. Everybody that went there is legendary. So how right. you gonna keep the legendary going, and how you gonna keep that um, physically and mentally um, mentality out of the team that hey, were. You step on the field and they scared to play against us, like Marvin said. The other team looking at us like, I don't want to play against them guys. Hey, Bo, I'm glad Steve well, Brown didn't play at Alabama because it'd have been easy to feel them size sixes. Oh, he was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Hey, let me tell you something. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Let me say this. Wait a minute. Let me say this. Hey, they brought Steve Cleese and they hang it from Coach Mira. Like some baby booties. Stop lying on me. I don't wear a size six. I wear a seven and a half. Don't you? <laughs> hey, hey, look, a hey, little bit cold. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, on the, um, but no, on the serious note, you know, uh, like you said, it is, it is some big shoes to fill, and you know, um, we we had we had a great leader. You know what I mean? But um, him leaving, you know, that gave us a certain source of pride, you feel me, that we have to uphold that standard. The guys that are still here and still working, they butts off, and the guys that are coming in, everybody got to understand, like, the standard is still the standard. None has changed. You know what I mean? So when you step on that field, you, you get ready to go hit somebody in the mouth. You know what I mean? You playing you playing for the pride of Alabama on your back. You playing for the guys that you go to war with every day. You playing for the people back home that are, you know, wishing you good luck. Praying that you you stay safe, that you go through these fights every day. You know what I mean. So it, it means some. It means some to us this year. You know what I mean. It, it messed up to us back last year, but yeah. it's you know what I mean. So yeah. we we, go, we gotta do to handle business. Yeah. You have to but, take but, it personal. If you ain't yeah. taking it personal, you at the wrong school, baby. If but, you but, take it personal, every but, time but, you walk but, off the lines. My mentality was that. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't doing it for the, the people back home. I was doing it for the last name that's on the back of my jersey and in that eight mm. on the front of my jersey. Oh, that's because what, because the people because the, the people that back home that claim your friend doing the one that want to see you back at home not doing anything. Right. Nah, you gotta I, play for that last you gotta play for that name on the back of your jersey. Every, nah, you know, no over half of the people don't know your name, Jaden. They only yeah. look at Roberts. Right. And, and if something happened, guess what they're going to say? Oh, that was their Roberts boy. They ain't going to say that was Jaden Roberts. They're yeah. going to say, oh, that was their robber boy. That's that lady's son that did that. And and, yeah. and and it'll be embarrassing to your mom from something that you did because of your last name. Because in, right. in the football world, they don't know players' first name. They only know their last name. That's why they always say – Maze. They always say um, Jones. They always say Ingram. They always uh, say Lacey. They wow. always say Henry. They always say wow. Cooper. They never wow. say their first name. They always go by their last name because of their last name is what you represent. And, yes, sir. and when you represent that last name, they go all the way down to your ancestors way before you were thought about even born. Mm -hmm. So you have to make those people proud that's in that grave they looking over you and blessing you. So when you when you step on that field, you playing for Jaden, but also you playing for that last name on the back of your jersey that'll make your family proud. And they can sit in the stands and say, this is my son. And not just Jaden Roberts. Nice. People say, oh, that's Jaden Roberts. No, that's my son, Jaden Roberts. That's right. Dang, when Marvin was going off for a second there, kind of remind me of someone. Uh, Marvin, can you say I don't give a piss about nothing but the tide? No. <laughs> <laughs> I will not engage in y'all's foolishness. Come on, Marvin. Come on, don't roll tie, Willie. Yes, yeah. right. Don't just on roll tie, Willie. <laughs> he gets an I want to interrupt real quick, and I just want to say, you know, Jaden, I've 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 told some of the other guys and everything um, over the past few months. Those of y'all that stayed. Um, I think y'all will all have a special place in the hearts of Alabama fans. I, you know, being where I am, I interact with fans, you know, day in and, and day out. And those of y'all that chose to stay um, are, you know, y'all are really high up on the fans um, 
ladder now. Um, and so I just want to say, you know, on behalf of all the fans, all of mm -hmm. y'all that have stayed, you know, we appreciate that. Yeah, no doubt. That's not going to be lost this season at all. Yeah. Before oh, we cut, I, I love you. I just want to you love you. who? I want, uh, I want to tell my cousin, my little big cousin, Jaden, I love him. <laughs> I love you, I love you too. Uh. <laughs> That's what's up. Now, Jaden, you've talked about going to war, and there's been several hot position battles, especially along the offensive line. And we have been seeing how James Brockermeyer has just been coming into his own, showing out. You know, he's going to be lined up beside you. Can you talk to us about his growth and what he's going to bring to the team this year? What you've seen about this spring that's made this emergence happen? Yes, man. I just want to say that's my guy. I want to say he's one of the hardest working people on the old line. And, you know, he, 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 at the end of the day, he's going to do, he's going to do the right thing for, you know, his team, for his boys. Um, James, you know, he came in with me um 2021 and, you know we we've been you know going through the process with like you feel me with the school and everything with each other um man he he just been waiting patiently like i was you know just kind of on my journey too but um now that he, he he got his chance you know he's taking advantage of the opportunity you know he's really working hard he's being a leader um, and just as a center, you know, he's he's just doing a really good job at, um, you know, just being that just being that uh, role model for the uh, the younger guys too, you know, the other centers that are um, gonna be right behind him, you know, um, just if anyone was to get hurt, you know, he's teaching them like the plays and you know just the scheme of the offense, you know, just how to get better, you know, he's a really good uh, role model for uh, everybody for real. Like, he's doing a good job. Man, that's freaking awesome. Love to hear that. Before I pass it to Steve, Jay, I want to ask you, what is the biggest misconception that the outside world is creating right now about you guys that you are going to clear up immediately as soon as that ball snaps in the fall? Don't want to answer that. <laughs> I was Just, about to say that right guard is the most underrated position on the football field, but I ain't going to say that. I mean, but, no, big, but, see, everybody is, is misconception they think alabama's done they they're saying a lot they, they don't even, they don't even have us in playoff predictions or any preseason polls so jay you, you're hearing the noise and i'm sure that that coach is filtering that in what's the biggest misconception that these people are going to be taught right come late august Great answer. um they go they go understand that we ain't soft you know we ain't taking we ain't taking no no BS, excuse my friend. We ain't taking no BS or none of that. You know, we, we go handle our business. At the end of the day, you know, we go we go play to the standard that we know we go, we go play at. You know what I mean? So all the doubt, all the negativity, all the rap poison, Coach Coach Saban was saying last year, all that we're not we're not dealing with that. You know, we're we're gonna stay on the one one mindset tra uh, path, and we're gonna keep doing what we're doing. So you saying I can keep talking trash to all my friends that played at other schools like I've been doing over the past. <laughs> Marvin, you know you're not going to stop no matter what. Come on. You are right. <laughs> all right, Steve, you take it, and then Olivia will go, then back down to Marvin, Bo, and then Stephen M. Smith. Uh, actually, man, I don't have anything to say. I, I, I really don't. I'm just, I'm just in wait, awe. Wait, you know, what? Um, I don't have – I don't have anything to say. <laughs> I'm just in awe, man. I'm excited. I'm, I really am. And I mean, all the people have been saying, you know, it's over for Bam. I see you, Chris, in, in the comments. We, Bama's going to make a liar out of you, brother. I'm telling you, I I, I, I believe in these guys. I believe in Coach DeBoer. I believe in, you know, uh, the, the process. So um, it, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. So that's yes, all sir. I have to say. Cuz, oh, one more thing, Cuz. I'm yes, sir. You, man. I love you too. <laughs> Olivia? Small, I want to apologize for Steve. Um, see, he's, listen, we talk about those people coming out of the woodwork saying that they're your cousins and they're your friends. Here comes Steve. <laughs> That's right. my first cousin on my daddy's side. That's my mama's name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, then, Jaden, then Jaden, I'm sorry. We built the light. We built the light. <laughs> it's okay. So I, um, I mean, I guess you know, being you know, working where I am, we you know, what we do is we preserve the history of Alabama sports. Um, I had uh, one of your teammates in this this week that uh, I had to talk to him and explain who uh, Derek Thomas was. So what? I'm gonna kind of. It's okay. It's okay. I'm working. I, I I'm working on getting all the players over there so that we can you know show them that this program goes back you know a hundred and forty a hundred and thirty years. Um, but Jaden, I want to find out you know of the uh, the former players that you have met some of the Alabama legends. Do you have one in particular that stands out to you, and if so, why? Um, mm. it's, it's gonna be crazy, but um, you know, just Landon really like he's an Alabama legend to me. I could, I, I would say Evan, I would say Evan, Evan Neal, but um, you know, my first time going to an Alabama football camp, I met Landon, and that was at the time where he was transferring from uh, Florida, Florida State. You know what I mean? So he was he was already at, he was at Bama. You know he was getting accustomed to them, um, meeting meeting the uh, new line and everything. But um, he was the one of the first O linemen that I met, and I just remember how you feel me how strong and like doing huge. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> but no, nah, he was um, he was just a legend to me. You know he a uh, hard worker, strong dude. You know what I mean? Physical on the football field. He just got the job done no matter what. You know, uh, he became a, a champion, and now he's, you know, doing great things right now. So, definitely. You know, hey, yeah, you know he's going to be there this weekend or for A-Day, right? Did you know that? Good man. All right. Yeah, well, well, night. get him on the field, so hopefully you'll get a chance to, to talk to him for A-Day. Yeah, man. Hey, cuz, two names. Every Bama player must know. Two names, especially on the defense. And I want you, I'm, I'm going to give you a nickname for one of them. But Derek Thomas is one of them. And Biscuit. 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 Just, just, Cornelius just look, Bennett. Just look up Biscuit. Look him up. Now, I know these, I knew these guys personally. No BS. When I yeah. tell you they were two two guys that set the standard, but I'll tell you, I'll, I'll put it to you like this Derek yeah. Thomas was, uh, what's his, Will Anderson 2.0. Mobile. He had 27 sacks in one season. <laughs> yeah. he's, deceased, he's deceased now, but when I tell you a, a Bama legend, dog, you can go, go Google him. Go yep. Both of them. I will. And then, but you, you ain't got to know about him. You ain't got to Google him. Make a color beat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a legend here. Marvin Constant, you're, the floor is yours, sir. So, Olivia, speaking of preserving history, it's funny to me. Every time I'm home, when I go to Rama Jamas for breakfast, I see the play, and I see these beautiful pictures of myself. I can look up the history of Bryant-Denny Stadium and the, the, the nine or ten players that it talks about in the history of Bryant-Denny Stadium, and to be one of those players. But when I walk into Bryant Museum, it's not reflected, though. I'm, like, I'm working. I'm working. You know, I'm – I'm working on it. I actually. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing. Have, I'm bringing mine. <laughs> I, have, I have some some plans in a company that I've been talking to. You know, when you walk in, you see the wall of honor that has all the Coach Bryant's players. I'm working on an interactive digital uh, platform that we will be able to feature everybody who came after Coach Bryant, and we'll do with all of y'all like we did with Coach Bryant's players. If you played on the team, we'll have your photo. We'll have some video. We'll have your hometown. We'll have what you did after you left Bama. So that is something that I am working on. I'll tell you, T. Rich, uh, we talk about it quite a bit when I talk to him about some of the stuff that we're going to do. So y'all are y'all are not forgotten. Um, I promise you, even though you're not on display, your videos are there. Your photos are there. Your news clippings are there. 
I mean, I'm just saying, I did have one of the best defensive oh, performances against the University of Tennessee, 17 tackles and a sack. I mean, are we just going to overlook all the work? Okay, mm. so, 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 Miss Olivia, I have a question, Olivia. Okay. Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on one second, though. Hold on one second, because <laughs> we got to finish with Jaden because he only has so much time. So, Jaden, what is your favorite part of the new offense, and which player do you think is going to excel the most in this offense? Mm. Okay, hang on. Can you ask that one? Um, I'm sorry. What, what is your favorite part of this new offense? What do you love most about it? And which player do you think is going to excel the most in this new offense? Whether it's a wide receiver, quarterback, running back, who is going to be that guy that say, hey, this offense is suited for him and he's that talented and he's going to abuse it? Man, okay, yeah, that's a good question, man. Um, you know, with this new offense, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot more uh, – a lot more passing. I, I like that. You know, the pass game is going to be it's going to be fun. You know, just take advantage of shooting it down the field. You know what I mean? The old line just being able to protect, protect Jalen. You know what I mean? And we're going to take pride in that. Um, but man, I think who's going to have a feel that? I, I honestly like with this new offense. Everybody's going to be having fun. No, no what? Who is that one? Okay. <laughs> wow. Uh, you don't have to answer him. No, nah, it, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I, I do got one. I, it, that's Jam Miller. Jam. You know, mm. the mm. strong man. And Jam is a, is a strong runner. You know, and it's just with the whole running back room. You know, we got a lot of strong runners. So it's going to be fun just seeing, like, you feel me, us just hitting the rock, man, down the field. But no, nah, yeah, everybody going to be having fun, man. Everybody's going to be excelling at a very high pace. That's what's up, man. Uh, Justin, can I say something real quick? Yeah, and then Bo will get his question and Steve. Oh, no, 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 go, go, go ahead. I'll get after Bo. Go ahead, Bo. Miss Olivia. We only have Jaden for so long. Miss Olivia, hey. when when I'm gonna get my um uh, my video of my um Alabama Bowl um uh, most wrestling yard in Alabama Bowl history <laughs> in the Paul Brown Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the button. All right. The so I'm gonna need y'all to email me your request of what y'all want to show. <laughs> and I'll we, we have a guy I, on staff that does video and that is and we will uh we will get some clips up there for you. I just, but if I, you'd come in if you'd come in when you were playing still, you would have seen every single week there was the Bo Scarborough highlight reel. Oh wow, well, I didn't know that. But I, just, I, I want I want that I want that I want that Washington round when I broke the Oh record. my god. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and since and since Auburn got a bow over the top, I got a bow over the top with two, <laughs> two of them. Two hey, hey of Bo, them. Bo, look in the private chat. Look in the private <laughs> chat. Here you go, look in the private chat. Y'all look in the private chat. Look in the private chat. Okay. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me let me let me say this before 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 um, Jaden goes. And this, I want to direct this to Miss Olivia. And this is real talk. This is y'all kicked him out. Um, we joke, we play, we do all that. But honestly, Miss Olivia, on behalf of the Bama Standard, we want to thank you. You do a lot of stuff for us. You do a hell of a job. And I feel like you should be acknowledged more. So, you know, on behalf of us, I want to give you your flowers because without you, we wouldn't have gone this far. And we are looking forward to working with you more. And you're just a jewel to us. And we love you. We appreciate you. So that's all I yeah, wanted to say. Well, y'all are very welcome. I mean, my job <laughs> is to, you know, after the, the players are, have graduated, you know, they kind of go from being under football to I kind of take care of them after they graduate. And y'all do a lot of stuff for our current and former players. You know, some of y'all are former players. And so I'm happy to support anybody that gets out there and supports our boys. Well, I okay, so what, you what, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, Mark, hold on, Mark, Mark, let me say this. So you said that you also uh, do stuff for players after they left Bama. So why don't you have a video of Marvin as a security guard at the mall? I don't understand. Why that's <laughs> well, it's not football related. See, oh, and okay, I was okay. just about to give you uh, some positive praise. Just when I was, see, God, God, don't, God, thank you, Jesus. For stopping <laughs> me. <laughs> thank you. But, but Mark, can't do it. Steve, Steve made some valid points, but, and I did want to say, you, we do appreciate you. And mm -hmm. I'm praying that 
things go well because I did nominate you to become a member of the A Club. Thank so you. hopefully, you know, BJ and all those guys on that side will for make it happen. But I did nominate you. Oh, we need to make sure that Jaden knows about the A Club so that when he graduates, he joins. Well, well, he's first, thing first is, every year, every year I'm a part of the A Club, but it's not the Alabama and I, A Club. And I, and I get and nominated I to, all the time. And I have to join as well. Yeah, you do. I'm gonna tell listen, I'm gonna tell him to, to email you the link for you to, to pay your dues. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's was, what it is. Marvin nominated me. You, so pay, I can pay you, you, you pay dues <laughs> and everything. You pay dues in the NFL, USFL, XFL, in the sports you play, you pay dues because it's for the union, it's for the players when they get hurt and then they have to go home. They give them they give them that certain amount of money to, you know, be taken care of. That's what they get that's, that's what the dues for. All right. Well, Stephen Smith has got his his question, and then we'll start to wrap things up. Stephen, what you got for him? Even though we got way off track and to another yeah. county, yeah. <laughs> I, Gre Green County actually. But go ahead. <laughs> but Jay, Jay, man, I I just got one thought for you, Jay. When you look at just the linebackers, man, I mean, how, how has Deontay Lawson, you know, taken that step to be that next just massive inside linebacker leading that entire defense? Man, D Law has done a really good job at being that leader at uh, the linebacker core. You know what I mean? Um, D Law, you know he's a, he's he was a strong player uh, for for ever since our freshman year. You know what I mean? Um, he's just been doing a really good job. You know he's um, he's really taking over the uh, defense. You know, helping out the young guys. Um, really, the scheme of everything, but uh, he's gonna be really effective in the, uh, the game that we got going on. But you know, he's just gonna be a really strong player, and you know, he's gonna keep doing good things. All right, Jaden, we greatly appreciate you jumping on with us. I'm gonna ask you one last question, and then I'll let you go. But well, first, before I let you go, I want you to give your social media so people can find you and show support and show love, and then definitely buy the merch. So, when was that? This moment during spring that you looked across the field and everything's kind of settled down and kind of quiet where you thought to yourself, we got something special here. What was that moment? Man, it was, um, it was really our, our, uh, it was really right at the fourth quarter, man. You know what I mean? Um, that, that particular workout isn't for everyone. You know, everybody can't do it. But um, just with the team we had, everybody, you know, just persevering through the workouts that we had, um, the changes in the coaching staff, um, and just everything that we had to overcome as a team and just with all the new things that, that was thrown at us and just understand, like, trust the process, trust the coaches, and trust the standard. You know, that um, that was something really special. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do it without any other team. I love that. I love that. Nice. All right, brother, if you would, before we let you go, like I said, tell everyone how they can find you on social media and then how they can get their hands on the merch. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Instagram is one of one Jaden, J-A-E-D-E-N. And uh, Twitter is um, Jaden underscore Kings. And you can find the merch. We're going to actually put out a link, uh, hopefully, hopefully soon once we, you know, because now that we got the trademark, that's good. And then, uh, you know, got the website going, um, you know, hopefully we'll get a little link to uh, post out there. And then we can also put out, a, uh, you know, just a, just a little preview of what we got going and what we got um, at the end, hopefully, of – Perhaps uh, July. Okay. July, but you know, just going with the going with the process right now of just hoping everything goes steady. And but uh, we got a lot of good help, good support, so it should go by fast. And we're looking forward to it, brother. Thank you again. We're mm -hmm. really great. glad that you could spend time with us and give us a little sure. bit of an update. We'll sure. see you next week, sir. We'll be your biggest cheering section. So, uh, yeah, do your thing, man. We're excited for you. Hey, I Don't forget you. to go get your Shania Twain from Jennifer. I'll get it over there this week. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right, cool. Uh, All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. Roll tie, brother. Roll tie.
Hey, roll the top. <laughs> All right, just pass it around the room. Everybody, it's time to promote what you got. We'll start always with Marvin Constant, then move to Bo, then Steve, then Miss Olivia will give her info, and then we'll head on out the door. Marvin, what you got? You can find me on Instagram, Constant45, Twitter, Constant451. Both of them have the direct link to Amazon to grab a copy of my book, Best 15 Bucks You Ever Spend, if you're looking for a, you know, a great resource to help you get in shape. Three different six-week workout programs, 18 weeks worth of workouts, one for beginners, one for intermediate, one for people who've been doing it for a while. And again, oh, you see the progress. The hammers. Hey, listen, you want to bring sexy back, baby? Hey, Best 15 Bucks You Ever Spend. So, again... It's all available. You can follow me. You can always reach out to me for questions on Instagram or Twitter. I'm always available. So, okay, Bo, you can find me on all social media. Bo Scarborough. Uh, I still got my clothing line going. Uh, enjoy retirement. Um, looking to see what I'm gonna do next. Uh, probably coach or be a player development um guy or uh, help guys with the next level. Uh, teaching them what's ahead of them. Uh, trying to be well, basically a, a player mentor to uh, show them the right ropes. So I'm in the process of doing that right now. So uh, and again, you can um, find my website on um, bowscarbro.com for the ladies. Okay, for the ladies, Steve, you can't get nothing. Yeah, Stephen Smith. Oh, okay. Hey. All right. So we got in my own words tomorrow. I'm breaking down the. Uh, Alabama spring practice, continuing that. We got, we're got we pushing toward the A-Day game, which will be on the 13th of this month. ESPN will have the call, so it will not be streaming. We got actual ESPN calling this game with the crew of Molly McGrath, Greg Malcroy. Dave Pash has got this one this time. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Good for Dave Pash. So, in my own words, tomorrow we're breaking down Bama football. More analysis here on, on spring practice. Talking about more guys starting to step up, starting to separate themselves. Maybe Bama won't have to dip more into that portal when it opens on April 15th. But if it does have to dip into that portal, we'll have that information for you as well. Okay, okay. Steve Brown, before we hand it over to Miss Olivia. Mm, Okay, Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at comic Steve Brown, one word, and on my fan page, comedian Steve Brown. This weekend I will be at the Columbus Sports Funny Loan. Uh, Friday show is already sold out. Then, uh, April 12th, I will be in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, with the Bama Standard. And I cannot wait to see y'all. So y'all make sure y'all come out. And I'll be out of the country on the Tom Join a Fantastic Voyage. So, definitely, man, I, I'm looking forward to seeing all the Bama fans and having a great time with y'all. And don't forget about the after party after that. They hired you as a deck mate? <laughs> <laughs> Shut no, you're going to be on the boat mopping. Man. <laughs> uh, I, actually, this is my seventh year as a headliner, huh? What? Okay. <laughs> and none of us have gotten tickets yet. No. Exactly. That part. Mm. Steven, I got you some tickets, man. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> You know what? We don't want we don't want to jump on your bass boat. No way. Anyway, <laughs> bass boat, Cra- crappy boat. <laughs> well, the star of the show, besides Steve, of course, Miss Olivia. We greatly appreciate you being with us tonight. It's been an absolute honor, and we're excited about what you're going to do with us next week. Before you go, tell folks what you got coming up, and then how they can find you and all that good stuff. I did want to say, you know, we briefly mentioned at the beginning the Alabama basketball going to the Final Four. And actually, this is the 20th anniversary of uh, before this year, our first ever appearance in the Elite Eight. And to celebrate that, I actually put up a basketball exhibit at the museum. So if you're going to be in town for A-Day or any time over the next year, we've got a basketball exhibit up. Uh, Wimp Sanderson and Mark Godfrey have already seen it and approved of it. Um, Erwin Dudley's come over and, and seen his name on there. Has Pat uh, been there? No, and, and he needs to come see it because uh, for years he kept asking me where his exhibit was, and then I put up an exhibit after he left. Hmm. This seems to be okay. a common theme. Everybody asking for exhibits, except for Steve Brown. <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do have the new uh, DeBoer exhibit up. 
we've got a 28 jersey with his name on it and then uh milro and malachi gave us some of their game worn jerseys so we've got those up and ready and of course then we've got you know like i said all the the guys lined up to sign for us on saturday for a day and again late night with landon snacks drinks uh after the bama standard podcast next friday excited glad to be a part of it well folks we greatly appreciate y'all tuning in with a little bit of a time adjustment that's okay though we still did our thing and y'all showed out we appreciate everybody who supports us each and every week remember next week we're going to be live at the paul w bryant museum 6 p.m central get there early star studded show you can't get ready for a day without us but until then roll tight everybody roll tight roll tight, roll tight. Roll tight. Roll tight.